in this section we learn about errors and exception handling we all make errors you've seen during the course of my uh, other videos i have made a ton of syntax errors uh, i've made a lot of other uh, end of line errors so you can try this uh, just try to do a print statement and miss the parenthesis and see what you get you will get an error and in this lecture we'll primarily focus on how to handle those errors i'm not talking about not making any mistakes, not making any errors at all. I'm not referencing to only the syntax errors, but there can be a whole lot of errors, especially when we are creating so many objects, when we are moving uh, certain objects from a certain place to another place uh, to do some sort of processing or compiling, or it could be uh, many other things. We've seen uh, very small examples and uh, the really large ones are um, also a part of assignments. We've seen some really great examples as we created class and you've seen how we run into errors. And what do we do when we run into an error during our execution of the program itself? We can exp when we know that we can expect an error and how do we still handle that error and continue to run our program? And now that's what we're going to focus on this particular lesson uh, and we'll understand how we do errors and exception handling. Let's begin uh, with uh, moving on to our Jupyter Notebook and let's, let's get started. Now, for example, I do a something like this print and I do a, uh, so for example, I do, I don't, I miss this and just say hello and it says EOL while scanning string literal note. We have what we call is a syntax error with a further description that it was a EOL, which means end of line error, while scanning the uh, string literal. So this is specific enough for us to see that we forgot to put a single quote at the end of the line. Now understanding these various error types will not only help us debug our code much faster, but also helps us understand how we code, how our coding behavior is in general. So I'll take this out and I fix this with whatever was missing and then we get the uh, our right output. Now this type of error and description is known as an exception. Uh, even if a statement of expression is syntactically correct, it may cause an error when an attempt is made to execute it sometimes. Errors detected during execution are called exceptions and are not unconditionally fatal. So uh, there are a list of built-in exceptions uh, on the link here uh, that I will share with you uh, as we go through the class. Now let's learn how to handle errors and exceptions in our own code. Now let's begin with understanding how uh, it works and what are the ways of handling. The One of the ways is try and accept. Let's look at how this is a basic terminology uh, and syntax used to handle errors in Python is try and accept statements. Now the code which can cause an exception to occur is put in the try block and the handling of the exception is the implemented in the accept block of the code. The syntax form is something like this. So it said try uh, do your operations here and then accept we give it some exception one then we if there is exception one then execute this uh, block then we would have accept exception two if there is exception two it should not be space should have a space here. If there's an exception to, then execute this block. Something like this, right? And after all that is done, this is also a statement, it's a else. If there is no exception, then execute this block. This is a basic syntax of uh, try and accept. Now we can also do just check any of the exception with uh, only using the except. Uh, let's get a better understanding of all this with an example. Let's look at some code and uh, let's see uh, if we can open a particular file. So I'm not going to run this because this is not Python code, it's just a syntax. 
uh, let me mark it like this all right now I'm going to try to open a file open a file remember from our if you have not gone through the files data structure please go through it now and we've demonstrated how to open a file and write a file and read a file so I'm going to say write say test write this okay and then I created this f variables so I could use the methods on those objects like this okay and then we do accept io error this is the name of my error you can do it anything that you like and then this will check for io error exception and print so something like say print error could not find file or read data so because I don't have anything called test file um, this will be giving an error and and when I get an error I don't want my entire program to collapse and stop uh, or freeze or do something else so I need to handle those files so I know I'm searching for a file what if that file does not exist that's when you put out an error say print content written successfully what if I find that content yeah so if I find the content then find that particular file then I would print and after that if I could find I found a file I would close it this is how you write a program where you are dealing with anything to do with files especially when you're trying to write and open and do some processing with it uh, this is what we do so let's see what ha what happens if I run this file it says code written successfully because it was able to find a test file and uh, it will it, because it's open right open will create a new test file and then it write, wrote to this and then content was written successfully now let's see what happens if we if we don't have the write permission it only read permission yeah so let's see I have I'm going to take this and I will change this to R now let's see what happens uh, what kind of an error because I only have read permission and that means it should print an error that we want it should say uh, how to find that and we got this error great so notice how we only printed a statement the code still ran and we were able to continue doing actions and running code blocks now try to do this without the example of try and accept and you will see that your code does not actually run so if I try to open a file uh, and run and write something to it and if that if I don't have permissions the error that you get it will stop your code from running so this is extremely useful when you have to account for possible input errors in your code. You can be prepared for the error and keep running code instead of your code just breaking as we saw above. We could have also just said uh, except if we weren't sure that the exception would occur. For example, I will uh, put something like this and uh, I know that uh, the we get this error uh, could not. So what happens if I just paste this, paste this whole thing? Yeah and then I take this name error all right I'm going to just say accept and this would still do the same thing um, so we don't actually have to memorize that list of exception types and now the, what if we kept wanting to run the code after the exception occurred right here um, it ended but what if we need the code to run continuously now that's where the finally comes in that's another keyword uh, so going back to our uh, syntax here and uh, if you thought else will stop you know else is just a fallback condition but what if I had something that I always wanted to run irrespective of the error and that's where the finally comes in so I would do something like this except else I'd also have a uh, finally uh, block instead of else or I could also have else along with finally and the code block would always be executed and I'll say this code block will always be executed no matter what happens above for let's see uh, for example I'm going to uh, take the same example so let's copy all the way here 
yeah and I'm going to change the write permissions to write and then oops it did not want it to execute so notice when I executed it said end of line EOF while parsing end of file had a problem so I didn't know what you wanted me to do with this so there is some sort of a syntax error something is not right all that so so we I would avoid that by doing a something like this always execute finally code blocks no matter what happens in try so you know it could not actually write this file but um, like I s showed you an error at the beginning but it's finally no matter what happens it did not give me the same error it gave me earlier but it actually printed this whatever when I said I had finally so we can always use this in conjunction with except uh, let's see a new example that will uh, take into account a user putting in uh, a wrong input so I'm going to do something like this so okay let's say uh, create a function ask integer and then try okay value is equal to integer uh, raw input um, I think in Python 3 uh, it's only called input and then say please enter an integer uh, if this is incorrect we'll come back and change it okay and then I would have except print looks like you did not enter an integer and we finally print and this should be in, in double quotes yep finally got fi okay this line this print shows up no matter what okay and then I want to print whatever the user printed all right let's see what happens when I run this I'm going to run this. Please enter an integer. I'm going to enter a string. So it says, uh, looks like you did not enter an integer. This print shows up no matter what. And I also get uh, some other errors, uh, which is OK. Uh, so notice we got an, this error. Uh, first one is to importantly notice that it, uh, please enter an integer, it asked me. And it said, looks like you did not enter an integer. So let's remedy this by asking the user and checking to make sure that the input type is an integer. And uh, let's try and fix this uh, code. Okay, I'm going to copy this thing and let's fix this here. Okay, so I will add this uh, part again. Yeah. try again yep and that should do so that's all I need to do and now see what happens so I will do a ask int and it will ask an integer and says oh this is this shows up no matter what so something isn't right uh, about the way I have done this and uh, will are you in a position to point out the error yeah so let's see because I entered an integer that happened and that's what happened so what if I what if I uh, type a string and says try again please enter an integer and I will write an integer and this time uh, it printed the value and this else executed the finally yeah so I did not get any other error this time I entered I did enter a uh, string but I did not get any integer at all so that's how it does and how can I continuously put in a loop if you may ask you know what if I um, there will be an error now so first time I enter I enter a string what if I enter a string again the second time so it'll give me it is still throwing up an error here but what if I want to keep checking until my condition is met that's simple 
we are, we, are, we are talking about, when I say until something is done, we are talking about a while loop. Yes, you got that right. So I'm going to do something like this, while true, try, and I will copy this, put this here, and my, so notice the indentation also in this. Uh, I need to have my except right under the tries print looks like you did not enter an integer and how I use all that I've learned in my previous session on loops and then I put else print yep that is an integer and it break right there and otherwise you do I finally print Okay, just uh, have that. And then in the end, uh, let's print out whatever the value entered by the user, uh, just so we know. All right. Right, now what happens if I do ask int? Please enter an integer. I will enter a string. And it says, please enter an integer. And keeps asking me till I enter an integer. And what happens if I do a float? says no that's not an integer so I have to enter an integer and then only then our code works yep great so now you know how to handle errors and exceptions in Python with the try except else and finally notation so this is all about error handling and I'm, I'm uh, glad that you were able to come this far uh, if you're not please go over this once again and try out a few more examples on how to handle and your right errors that you're expecting in your code See you in the next class.